Not too long ago, I found these mirrors on the side of the road. Today, I'm going to show you how I framed one and turned it into some pretty cool house decor. And with the mirror being free, this gave me a little bit more creative freedom. I could have done something a little more traditional, but what fun is that? I wanted to make a cracked mirror and then put epoxy between all the cracks. Some might consider this project bad luck, so let's see how it goes. I started off with a backing board as my foundation, and this was half an inch thick. I also had a couple of oak boards for the frame, and these were 2 by 3 inches. But my backing board was 15 inches wide and 40 inches long. To make sure that the board fit into our future frame, I cut the corresponding sides oversized. For example, I cut a 20 inch board for the 15 inch side. This gives you the flexibility to fine tune the sizes later. Then I adjusted my table saw fence to about a fourth of an inch out. This is in preparation to make rabbits on each board. I ran each piece through the table saw vertically, and then I made the corresponding cut along the width of the board. The goal here was to create negative space for the back panel to sit in, and of course, you want to measure everything before the table saw actually starts spinning. If you're in a small space like mine, maybe running a table saw, a vacuum, and a space heater at the same time isn't the greatest idea. I set the table saw to 45 degrees and ran each board through it again. I made sure that the outermost corner would touch the blade, and this is going to give each piece a nice bevel detail. Now you get to see why creating that negative space is important. Without it, our back panel wouldn't have anywhere to sit. So we solved that spacing issue, but now we have to take care of the corners. I started off by cutting one corner, and then I used the board as a reference for where the other corner should be cut. You only have to do this twice, since each opposite side is going to be the same length. The frame was almost ready for a glue up, but I wanted to add some reinforcement. I marked a small line on every corner, and then I used this little jig to drill a hole for the dowel. And this is nothing special, it's just a piece of wood with a perfectly centered hole, and a line that corresponds to that. Line the two pieces up, and clamp them together, then you can start drilling. Although I did make this jig, you can actually get them pretty cheap online. If done properly, you should be able to put a dowel on the mating pieces in your frame. Using dowels helps reinforce the joints, but it also helps with alignment. Once I made sure all my corners lined up, I started gluing all the pieces together. After that, it was just a matter of setting these up on the clamps and making sure that everything is square for when it dries overnight. Then I gave the frame a nice sanding and worked my way up to 240 grit sandpaper. You can see the beveled edges I mentioned earlier a little bit better here. I sanded these cautiously because I didn't want to round them over too much. After all that hard work, the mirror frame was really coming together. I also made sure to sand the back panel to prepare for wood stain. If you haven't already and you like what you're seeing, be sure to like and subscribe as it would really help the channel. I used Minwax's Colonial Maple for the frame, and for the back panel, I used Varathane's Ebony Wood Stain, which actually worked really well. That same panel would have epoxy poured on it later on, so I needed to create a seal. I laid some glue on the inside of the rabbits, and then I laid the back panel in there. Then I put some weights on the back panel, just to make sure that the seal would be nice and tight. I gave this a day to dry, and then I started with the unique portion of this project. And as you can imagine, this would require me to break the mirror. It was actually kind of surprising how much of an impact the mirror can take without breaking. But once I had my pieces, I just added some Gorilla Glue to the backside and started laying them on my board. And this was just to hold them in place, so that I could manage the whole project more easily. I let the glue dry for a few hours, and then I started preparing my epoxy. This is a two-part epoxy that I got on Amazon, and it's super easy to use. It has a one-to-one -one ratio, which just means that it needs an equal amount from each container. After pouring and mixing the epoxy, I started pouring it between all the glass pieces. This ultimately had two purposes. One of them was to make the back black panel glossy. 
and the other was to fill in all the gaps between the glass and make one big level surface. I went over the entire piece with a heat gun just to get any air bubbles out and make sure that the epoxy spread evenly. The next day, after the epoxy dried up, I used a chisel to gently remove any remaining epoxy off the glass surface. It was fairly easy to do this without damaging the glass because the epoxy doesn't really stick all that well to the glass. After that, I started cleaning the glass. And if you want to get rid of some of the risk with these sharp edges, just be sure to sand all the glass edges before actually gluing the pieces to the board. I think the piece was looking really cool and there are only a couple more things we need to do. I didn't plan on hanging my mirror, but I can definitely understand that someone might want to. And to do this, you just need to install a couple of ring hangers on the backside. As a final step, I used Verithane's water-based polyurethane to coat the entire frame for protection. I gave this three coats and I followed the direction of the grain with a sponge brush. I gave this a few hours to dry and the project was done.